Good afternoon everyone, welcome to an Oz Cycling Chase update on the 22nd of November 2013. My name's Chris Nitzo and tonight we're going to be taking you through a couple of things. So the first one being the Northwest WA Low, uh, possible tropical cyclone developing there. And the second is, is a possible golf disturbance later on and uh, in the forecast period and that may create a fair amount of rainfall over the northern half of Queensland in particular but also parts of the Northern Territory and I'm sure a lot of graziers are wanting to know what the latest is in that particular or with that particular system. Alright folks so let's get into it tonight. Thanks to weather zone, the latest satellite imagery, we can see our tropical low developing nicely here. But it is developing, even though I say nicely, it's developing fairly slowly. Uh, it is still not a very well-defined circulation. So it is still only developing reasonably slowly over the last 24 hours. Probably a bit slower than we would have expected. Look, elsewhere, the, the tropics are just going off. There's, there's thunderstorms everywhere uh, in the northern half of Australia. Anywhere sort of north of Mount Isa and east of Mount Isa in the Queensland region even places further to the south are getting drier, drier storms. Uh, over the Northern Territory, we've just got general storm activity over the, over the northern half. And anywhere sort of uh, Broome's about the cutoff, anywhere north of Broome uh, is getting some shower and storm activity on the Kimberley coastline as well. Over the Coral Sea, things are looking fairly uh, quiet. There's a nice little upper high here, but it's creating a lot of wind shear out here in the Coral Sea. And we're seeing a little bit of wind shear affecting the tropical low slash cyclone, but not uh, not as much as it has been. So we would expect that overnight this low is about to enter some fairly good environmental conditions for further development and hopefully an upgrade into a TC. The cyclone name will be Tropical Cyclone Alessia. If, uh, if and when it gets named. So if we take a look at computer model guidance uh, according to the GFS model, last night the GFS model was suggesting a North Kimberley impact and then remaining inland over the Northern Territory. Uh, but today it's since somewhat gone a little bit different to that. Uh, most of the members now have it grazing the coastline and then having a potential uh, time to just re-intensify a little just before making a, a, a final landfall here just to the south of Darwin. Some model members uh, do still suggest that Darwin could be in the direct firing line but look overall that's not the general, uh, the general thinking of most of the model guidance. Now in the longer term it is expected to get close to the Gulf of Carpentaria. If it gets over the Gulf of Carpentaria, we could be looking at a potentially re-intensification or potential re-intensification of that system over the Gulf. If it stays inland, it's going to create a lot of convergence inland and going to create a lot of rain. So both ways, it is still going to be a system that we will need to watch over the extended term, even after it makes landfall. The latest that we've got here, as I say, this update is a little bit earlier today uh, due to other commitments than it would normally be. So the latest one that we've got here is from about lunchtime, WA time, and we see the low pressure still hasn't been named, not expected to be named until overnight or early tomorrow, and then expected to be a marginal system. Remembering again, as we talked about last night, that all of the, all of the winds will primarily be in the northern half of the system. Very little wind here to the south of the system. So even though it's getting so close to land, uh, you won't see too much of an effect of it. Um, it's south of the particular, south of the core. So if the core obviously hits south of Columbaroo, for instance, then Columbaroo will experience the, the, the bulk of the, of the worst conditions. But at this point in time, not expected to do that. Expected to just graze along the top there. Um, and then as it heads towards the west and top end, the Bureau expected to weaken as it comes under an increasingly sheared environment as it pushes further to the west. The one thing I'd like to note here is that even though the system is uh, not expected to intensify. It is very small. Now, in our experience and, and, and climatologically, very small tropical cyclones will tend to weaken and intensify very rapidly and sometimes unexpectedly. So, despite the fact that overall it does say Category 1 and it does maintain a very, very weak system, just don't be surprised if it does hit a pocket of 6 or 12 hours of really good conditions atmospherically uh, that the system could intensify fairly rapidly. Similarly, don't be surprised that if it does hit a pocket of 12 hours of dry air or 12 hours of wind shear, 
uh, it will weaken very, very quickly as well. So just be aware that while this says Category 1, there could be some minor fluctuations in that and some fairly fast fluctuations in that intensity on its way through. Uh, depending on obviously what the atmospheric conditions are. At the moment the atmospheric conditions are moderately favourable. It's still undergoing 10 to 15 knots of wind shear. Wind shear will decrease and let's have a look at that now. Looking at the latest European guidance uh, at a higher, higher resolution thanks to Weather Underground, we can see that the system here it is lies in 15 to 20, even up to 25 knots to its north. Uh, if we look at the shear profile of this area, it's very, it's under sort of the 10 to 15 knots of wind shear, but it is heading in, it's heading in a direction in that direction there. So that's our system here where my cursor is now, and it's heading in an east southeast to east direction. Now, if you look close it's heading into this red area so that's where it is now and it's heading there into this red area the red area is some very favorable uh, low wind shear conditions and so as it heads into that region it should intensify as long as it doesn't make landfall now the other big issue and we've been talking about this issue for the last couple of days is moisture Unfortunately or fortunately this system is now starting to get some dry air wrapping around it. Now as it does that it's going to really 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 struggle to develop a, a, a strong circulation and strong convection that's going to remain around the core of the system. So the, that's the reason it really needs that, that moisture is because it needs to be able to hold on to the storm activity that develops around its core. Now as it goes into Saturday morning we start to see uh, Saturday morning we start to see 20, 20 to 30 knot winds on its northern quadrants. Still the model keeps it back and holds it back from developing into a cyclone. So if we look at the relative humidity profile, we still see this drier air starting to wrap into the circulation. Uh, as I said, this dry air, we've been watching it, watching it, watching it the last few days, and it has been heading eastwards all the time. Uh, unfortunately, the cyclone has now slowed down, or the low has slowed down. Because of that, the dry air is managing to catch up and uh, and get, in, get into the circulation itself, which is not good news if you're looking for a, uh, a weak cyclone or at least, even if you're not looking for a weak cyclone, but you're looking for rain, uh, still not a very good sign because that dry air is going to limit the rain potential from the system too, which is already limited because the system's so small, uh, it's going to limit it even further. So as we head towards Saturday night and into Sunday morning, and using the Euro model, we can see here it sort of nudges the coastline around Columbaroo. Not much, not much wind to its south. Uh, we still have gales now uh, to its north on Saturday, uh, on Sunday morning. We have gales to its north. This is the shear profile at the time. We can see that the system remains in very low wind shear. However, it's very close to some moderate wind shear. And as it crosses that. As it crosses that Joseph Bonaparte Gulf, the shear may increase. Now we see the system is moving just fast enough to avoid that really dry air from coming into it and uh, and getting getting into its circulation. So here's the centre right in there and we see this dry air trying to wrap in around it but it's just been held at bay uh, through the uh, monsoon trough out here just to the east uh, which is creating a lot of moisture in the mid-levels. So hopefully for everyone's sake who wants a bit of rain out of this that dry air doesn't wrap right around it and now if we continue looking at the system all the way through to landfall so this is now Sunday morning 7 a.m. Queensland time 6.30 uh, NT time as this is 10 a.m. Uh, Queensland time 1 p.m. it starts to slow down as it pushes into the Joseph Bonaparte um, just ar around as it gets close to landfall though it does start to weaken and we look at the reasons why that could be happening we still see this dry air is trying to catch up to it but it's not quite wrapping around the middle uh, and if we look at shear and see what's happened to the wind shear we see that shear has definitely increased you can see the red is now over land the blue has come into the region so we've got 20 knots plus of wind shear, and so the system is dying a death on its approach. 
That's not to say that the area north of the centre may not may experience still some strong winds, possibly even some gale force winds. You can see here, 28 to 35 knots hitting the coast as it makes landfall Sunday night, Monday morning. And once the system's actually over land, it seems to it seems to get the strongest winds start to go on shore. Uh, so it's once the system's over land that we see those strongest winds hit the coast. Now, if we track the system further on. So once it crosses the land, uh, it's going to remain over the far northern top end coast uh, or very close to the far northern top end coastline as opposed to the, more the central area. So it does have a fairly good chance of re uh, sort of coming back out into the Gulf, re-emerging in the Gulf was my word I was looking for. Uh, and as we look towards Tuesday morning, we see it moving very quickly across the top end and uh, re-emerging in the Gulf as a low once again. It it does have some fairly strong winds to its north as it does so. Uh, then on the Wednesday morning, we see it push to in a southerly direction towards the southern gulf, but we see that it loses a little bit of its oomph there. So let's have a look at what's going on around about five days time. So this is right around Wednesday morning and we see it in the southern gulf and we see some nice north, north to northwesterly winds here uh, at about 20 to 25 knots. However, when we start to look a little bit deeper and have a look at what might be causing some weakening in this system, we start looking at wind shear, and wind shear over the, over the region is still quite low, especially for this time of year at only about 10 to 15 knots. So that might not be the major cause. So then we look for relative humidity. And what we start to see is this dry air is now starting to creep right over the top of the top end and starting to come into the gulf. We've got dry air starting to come in from the south. Um, and right over the system, the system lies right near the coastline at this point in time, we're starting to see a lot of dry air getting in and around the region. So that could be the uh, culprit for the fact that it weakens between the, the moment it gets in the Gulf and by the time we're talking Wednesday, Thursday. And by the Thursday, it is now inland and it's really lost any sense of, of what it used to be. So uh, at this point in time, both, model, both models, the GFS and the Euro, are not making this into a significant cyclone in the Gulf of Carpentaria. But it is still a long way away. And I do caution you that if that dry air doesn't come in as much as the models are predicting, uh, we've still got fairly good wind shear conditions in this region. And there's still enough there. There's still enough positive uh, positive things happening in the atmosphere there for the potential for this system to redevelop in the Gulf country. So in its longer term, we will definitely need to watch it as it pushes into the Gulf, just in case uh, some of the modelling might be incorrect this far out. And it is a long way out. We're still looking five, six, seven days away uh, by the time it gets in the Gulf. So uh, you never know. Things might things might fall into place and it could develop into a cyclone in this area. Regardless though, it's going to bring in some lot of rain, great rainfall, so let's have a look at some rainfall. So using the GFS model, thanks to WeatherZone, you can see that over the next seven days, uh, the GFS model has a lot of rainfall over a lot of parts of the far northern, uh, far northern continent. Anywhere sort of from Cairns northwards, we see a lot of rainfall over Queensland getting into the peninsula. Unfortunately, the model is, is now backtracking on a lot of the falls over western Queensland. But look, this is only one of a number of models. Uh, we see uh, over 300 millimetres of rain being pre predicted by the model in a number of different areas of the Gulf country. So that's definitely a, um, uh, definitely a positive for that region. Now, it all will depend on where that low goes. So if it goes a little bit more east towards the southeast in the Gulf, we're going to see a lot more rain here. Look, the tropical cyclone Alessia or the uh, low, which whatever it will end up being, isn't going to provide as much rain as you'd normally would expect because it is such a, sl a small system and we do have a lot of dry air wrapping around it. So we're probably going to see limited rainfalls in the vicinity of the cyclone um, and uh, more of the rain will actually fall probably after the cyclone gets past or the low goes past in that fresh to strong northwesterly flow. Looking at a new experimental guidance model, we can see that uh, it's predicting four to 500 millimetres right in that southeastern parts of the Gulf Country. And then anywhere sort of north of Townsville, the falls really start to peter off underneath, under 50 millimetres. But uh, anywhere over the north and uh, far north and even into the uh, in, even into the northwestern parts of Queensland, looking at some very decent falls, these, these numbers here are in inches. So you can pause the video at any time to have a look at your specific area and what it's predicting. 
So looking at the rainfall tomorrow, we still have 15 to 25 millimetres through a, a large part of Northern Territory, a large part of inland Queensland, even getting onto the coast at 10 to 15 mils for most of the coastline. Uh, some very strong thunderstorm activity will redevelop again tomorrow over most of Queensland. The low pressure system continues or the cyclone will continue to push towards the east. As we head to Sunday we see that rainfall amounts increase in the Gulf as a north to northwesterly flow increases. We also see some, uh, some heavier rainfall making it to the coastline with 15 to 25 mils in parts, 25 to 50 over the Cape. Also, the uh, rainfall increases over the western top end as the low or cyclone pushes towards the region. By Sunday night or Monday morning, the low or cyclone will hit the coast, uh, will exit off here uh, somewhere in the Gulf or the Gulf Country and we continue to see a flow increasing with strength in the north, in, in the uh, in the Gulf of Carpentaria. So we're going to see these northwesterlies coming in from here, north northerlies coming in from here, converging, creating a lot of rain uh, along that coastline. So we're looking at 24-hour falls of over 100 millimetres in parts of far northern Queensland. Once again, as I said, anywhere sort of north of Townsville, the, the falls start to uh, start to drop back. But you're still looking at good rainfall anywhere to, uh, you're still looking at at least some rainfall anywhere north of Mackay um, as that, as that development happens in the Gulf. On Tuesday we see uh, the model guidance starts to become a bit more varied so take this with a grain of salt and it will depend on what's going on in the Gulf as to who gets the, the bulk of the rain. At this point in time it's suggesting northern Queensland, particularly northern inland Queensland will see the best falls but that can change depending on what's going on here. If we look at over the four days we're going to see very heavy rainfall as we've been saying in the Gulf country. We're going to see falls of 50 to 100 millimetres pretty well over most of northern Queensland, northern northern territory, but also getting inland uh, a fair way too. Um, over the next four days, take this one with a huge grain of salt because this will all depend on what's going on in the Gulf. At this stage, looking at possibly over 400 millimetres in that next four day period here in the southeastern Gulf. But once again, that will all depend, and I must stress this, all depend on what Alessia does or the low does once it crosses the top end and gets into the Gulf. If it just dies uh, out here because of dry air, we're not going to see anywhere near these sort of falls. If it decides to intensify uh, into a tropical cyclone, we're going to see the falls become more centralised rather than a big group of falls all over northern Australia. They're going to be centralised, heavier but centralised. Um, if it decides to remain a rain depression and get into the Gulf Country, we're going to see the falls uh, move further south and also go into the Northern Territory here as well. So there's something to keep an eye on. It's still up in the air. There's still too many variables. So for the moment, stay in touch with all the latest from the Bureau of Meteorology on uh, the tropical low that could form into a weak Category 1 cyclone over the next 24 hours and head towards the western top end. After that, we'll have a look at what's going on in, in Queensland in the longer term in the next couple of days. Thanks for watching today and we'll talk to you again tomorrow.